Good Friday morning, everyone. Today we're talking about chronic fears, the brain, and cortisol levels. In the previous post, we talked about dopamine. Dopamine being a pleasure chemical. And it's the quick fix chemical. Pleasure seeking, instant gratification, impulse. And we do this because we get stressed. And why are we stressed today? We're surrounded in the media, in the news, constantly by fear, negativity, bad news. We have a vicious cycle going on. Cortisol level, or cortisol in itself, is a chemical that's released by the cortex of your adrenal glands. When I get into a fearful situation, my body will release cortisol to mobilize sugar into my blood so I can either run from the problem or fight it. This works in congruency with the brain. We talked about the amygdala before. The amygdala is your threat center. So when I see a fearful, negative thing on the news, my amygdala kicks in and it starts to set up a circuitry within my body. The amygdala is basically deadening or reducing the volume of the prefrontal cortex that should keep me into executive thought, making clear, rational decisions. So I charge up my amygdala, get fearful, signals to my body to create cortisol levels so I can run or fight from the problem. And if I see fearful or bad news constantly from just looking at my phone every day or in the first 15 minutes, they say 79% of us look at our phone. If I constantly do that, I build my amygdala up. It gets stronger. It keeps me from making clear, concise decisions and puts me to a fearful state. So I constantly have cortisol firing all the time. Does that make sense? So I live in a hyper cortisol, hyper fight or flight syndrome. And so I'm in bad news with fear. And then I try to counter it to feel good with dopamine. So then you see people who get addicted to what? Drugs, sugar, alcohol, tobacco, gambling, shopping. And that is an attempt to create some form of joy because I have all the fear in my life. So the point is to reduce the amygdala fear threatening feeling to reduce cortisol levels and to actually balance out the dopamine response. So fatigue will set in if you let it go. So fatigue will make cortisol levels and dopamine levels just deplete. And then you get into a bad situation because then you'll start seeking out everything to help you feel good without any caution. In research, some of the most simple things to do, they say, and I see it work with patients. You want to reduce phone usage. Instead of looking at your phone the first 15 minutes of the day, just create a schedule. Within the day, say I'm going to look at my phone so many times a day and only look at it for this long to answer my texts and my emails. If you set up a schedule, you'll train your brain and you'll stop creating high cortisol levels and then reduce the dopamine seeking um, cycle in your body. Food, inflammatory foods such as sugars, processed foods, trans fats. Research is showing that if you have high amounts of inflammation, you screw up your dopamine cycles in your brain and you actually reduce the amount of serotonin that's produced in your body. And serotonin is needed to help you feel happy. Sleep. We all need sleep. Sleep is so important because if you get restful sleep throughout the night, you wake up with lower cortisol levels. If you wake up with high stress levels, you will seek out things in your day that will keep you in the high cortisol cycle. You look for stressful, fearful things. We're going to go in deeper about these later next week or the weeks to come because they're very interesting. I know it's a lot to take in, guys. It's on the post, but I want you to try these three things, phone, food, and sleep. If you have any questions or you have any messages, check us out. And uh, we're going to be on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And um, next week, it's going to be really fun when we talk about these three. I hope you have a great weekend. And um, happy Valentine's Day. I almost said happy Thanksgiving, but happy Valentine's Day.